uh, thanks uh, for the contributions. So just to introduce OGC API processes. OGC API processes is a standard that uh, defines a way of wrapping um, computational tasks. So algorithms uh, within an executable process that a server can offer uh, on a network or in the cloud, um, but uh, also uh, processes that client applications can execute across uh, across a network. Um, if you've used the previous generation of OGC standards, you might remember the Web Processing Service Standard or WPS. OGC API processes is the successor to that. So it's a restful approach uh, for doing many of the same things that the WPS standard did. OGC API uh, is effectively a, a brand. So we, um, it's a suite of standards. The OGC API standards, uh, it's a suite of standards that, um, that specify how you uh, spatially enable web APIs that make use of the open API specification and use a RESTful approach. Um, and what we've done is we've designed a, a suite that uh, covers a number of resources, so uh, vector feature uh, coverages, pro uh, processes, and several others. I'll go through them later on. We've designed a suite and um, and specified standards for each one of those resources, and I'll go into that um, a bit more in a few sec uh, few seconds. So, why are we interested in web API standards? Why are we investing in the development of uh, OGC API standards? Well. Web APIs, uh, they've been proven to be a very effective enabler of rapid software development. Um, I mean, many of you are software developers, so you have probably seen um, examples of developers picking up uh, an API definition document and within a, a, an hour or two, they've got um, you know, an implementation um, up and running. So web APIs, you know, they, um, they enable rapid software development. But also what we found was that whenever there's no standard available, so whenever you come across a series of web APIs that are doing something similar but not using a, a particular standard, um, you find that the, uh, the cost of actually integrating those web APIs into a solution, uh, it tends to increase you know, uh, phenomenally. It's, it, um, it tends to create a burden uh, on end users and on um, systems integrators. So we've taken it, we've um, we've designed a multi-year uh, initiative uh, to develop a series of standards that will spatially enable web APIs in a consistent way, and we call those the OGC API standards. And to ensure that these standards are implemented. Um, and designed in a consistent way. We've identified a number of principles. Uh, for instance, the various working groups that are designing these standards, they are um, um, abiding by the OGC W3C special data on the web best practices. So these best practices, for instance, identify um, you know, um, uh, concepts or requirements for using metadata, for instance, for using identifiers. Uh, but also for linking various resources. So the, a series of best practices. But we've also um, identified the need to leverage the open API specification. So this is uh, a specification by the Linux Foundation. Um, and um, what it does is that it describes how web APIs are supposed to describe themselves. So um, it basically uh, explains how they should advertise the paths um, that they expose, but also the schemas for exchanging information with, uh, you know, between client and um, and and uh, so, uh, service implementations. Another key principle is um, the developer experience. So one of the first things that we did when we started. Uh, developing uh, these standards is that we said, you know, we have to ensure that they're as implementer friendly as possible. And we've continued to keep that as one of our key, uh, uh, you know, principles as we've been des uh, designing the specifications. We're also designing them to be as modular as possible. So uh, earlier on, I mentioned the various resources and the fact that the suite um, focuses on 
individual resources so that we have a, a standard for each one of those uh, resources so the idea is to make them modular building blocks so that you can plug them in and build solutions that address a variety of needs and all of this has been done out in the public on uh, public github repositories and we run several code sprints um, inviting you know both ogc members and non-members as well to participate in those initiatives so I've mentioned OGC API standards a number of times. Uh, so what are they? On the slide, uh, it's an overview of what those standards are, and I'll quickly run through them. We've got OGC API joins, which specifies an interface for accessing, um, in fact, for creating and accessing uh, joins between feature collections. So it's kind of like an SQL join, but uh, done um, on the web between web APIs. OGC API discrete global grid systems, which specifies an interface for accessing uh, data and other resources that have been organized according to partitions or tessellations across the globe at different levels of detail. OGC API records for accessing catalogs uh, of metadata. OGC API maps for accessing electronic uh, maps. OGC API styles for accessing symbology and styling. OGC API moving features for accessing vector feature data that represents moving objects like um, mobility DB was mentioned earlier on, for instance. OGC API tiles for accessing tiled resources. So you might remember the WMTS standard or the web map tile service standard. So OGC API tiles is the successor to that particular standard. OGC API common specifies the foundation building blocks on which other OGC API standards are built. OGC API routes um, specifies an interface for accessing routing information, like for instance, for transportation. OGC API environmental data retrieval, that specifies an interface for accessing spatial or temporal environmental data resources. And then OGC API features, one of the first to be published, that specifies uh, an interface for accessing vector feature data. And uh, OGC API processes, that's what uh, we're, uh, most of uh, this morning's talk is about. And that specifies uh, an interface for uh, wrapping algorithms, computational tasks, uh, as executable uh, processes. And then OGC API coverages for accessing coverages such as satellite imagery. And then OGC API 3D geo volumes for accessing 3D data typically organized in, uh, in volumes. Um, and then finally, OGC sensor things API, which um, you might have come across that specifies an interface for accessing sensors as well as the, the, the data that they offer and typically within the internet of things. And the way they have been designed, uh, these standards, um, they've been designed um, as building blocks. So the idea is that the resources that they offer can be uh, built and integrated into solutions. Uh, what you can see on the side, you probably won't be able to see the detail at the back, but basically um, we have here a landing page. So all of the standards, will uh, they offer a landing page, uh, but they also offer a conformance declaration, which is a list of um, the conformance classes that they implement, API definitions, so open API uh, specification documents, and then collections. So these are collections of resources. And then from there, the various uh, resources that each of those standards uh, offer. So tiling schemes from OGC API tiles, processes from OGC API processes, and, and so on. Now, delving deeper, and this time focusing on OGC API processes, um, so with each algorithm that you want to publish on the network um, or that you want to publish uh, across the web, um, OGC API processes uh, enables you to describe the inputs, outputs, uh, but also the mode uh, as well as the mechanism through, through which that particular process is invoked. It enables you to, um, to describe that process. And uh, again, the diagram is small, but this is... Um, that's where the actual process um, uh, schema is, but you can see everything else that supports that particular uh, construct. So we have, uh, for instance, description of the actual execution, uh, but also conformance declaration and so on. So there is a, a data model behind, um, you know, behind um, the standard, and that makes it possible to harmonize how those um, uh, processes are implemented. It's a multi-part standard, part one, specifies the, funda uh, for, uh, the fundamental building blocks, the foundation uh, um, or common building blocks on which the other parts are built. But we have 
additional um, parts for supporting transactions. For instance, uh, earlier on there was a discussion about um, about um, OpenEO uh, as well as uh, was it uh, C Space, for instance. And so what we've done is with uh, with part two of OGC API processes, we've designed a standard that enables you to push uh, algorithms um, through a network onto some infrastructure and then have those algorithms run closer to the data. So the idea here is that with, uh, for instance, space agencies or even meteorological agencies, they have so much data that they're unlikely to, you know, to, to send it across a network to millions of end users for them to run on their own server. I mean, um, very few people have desktop computers that are able to handle all of the data that the Met Office has, for instance. So with OGC API processes part two, that makes it possible for those algorithms to be pushed onto some infrastructure into the cloud, for instance, and have those operate there. And then part three is about workflows and chaining. Um, each one of those standards um, requires you to implement a web API that offers um, certain constructs, conformance declarations, and so on. And these are the paths uh, for how you access those resources. So you can see, you know, we're using uh, typical HTTP um, uh, methods, get, post, delete, and so on. Uh, it's RESTful, so, you know, it's very easy to in integrate it. The way the standard enables the clients to invoke it, uh, you have asynchronous capability, so you can start a job and then, you know, go make a cup of uh, tea or coffee and then come back later on and uh, get the results. And throughout that, uh, throughout the execution of that job, your system can do other things because it's not blocked. That's the asynchronous uh, capability. So the um, the building blocks that you can see in gray there, they support asynchronous capability. So the ability to dismiss or to run callbacks and also to list jobs. The other building blocks like the process description, open API, JSON, uh, and HTML, those are available for both uh, synchronous and asynchronous capability. Now, open source software, um, there are a number of open source software products that support OGC API processes. The one, two that I'd like to highlight are Zoo Project, which it's a geospatial processing engine written in C, Python, and JavaScript. Um, most of the code is in C, C, C++, and it is available using an MIT X11 license. It implements both the WPS standard and the OGC API processes uh, standard. Um, it supports a number of libraries. So underneath it, you have GDAL, you have um, Saga, you have uh, OTB, uh, the Orfeo toolbox. Um, you've got several other libraries. So the whole idea behind Zoo project is to make it possible and easier to get those libraries integrated um, into a RESTful um, uh, you know, uh, service that client applications can invoke across a network. So um, this here is just a list. And on the left-hand side is a screenshot from, um, uh, uh, from the website. Um, so this is just an, a, a screenshot of the analytical hill shading uh, application. Um, so basically, the, for an end user, you simply, you know, you can just uh, use the uh, user interface, add a URL to a data resource, press submit, and it will run uh, that particular process underneath, uh, underneath, uh, uh, you know, underneath the hood. Um, and then it, um, if you are, you know, if you are a, a developer, you can even use something like Postman to send a JSON uh, request, um, send JSON to the uh, API that invokes the process in the background, and then you get a result, uh, uh, a result back. So these screenshots um, uh, uh, show that capability. There is there are quite a lot of processes underneath um, Zoo project. Uh, and when I say a lot, I've seen an instance that had more than 100 processes uh, covering a whole variety of uh, applications. So I'm just picking one here. Um, and this is just to illustrate what happens. So when the response comes back, in this case, um, there's a URL to a, uh, a TIFF, GeoTIFF image, and in this case, it's a hill shading, uh, the result of hill, uh, hill shading operation, and uh, and you can see what uh, what it looks like, as well as uh, a legend there uh, displayed on uh, on QGIS. So, um, so that is Zoo project and how 
uh, it supports the OGC API processes standard. So all of this, uh, the OGC API processes uh, standard, it operates in the background. Uh, if you're a developer, you'll see it. If you are an end user, you probably will not see it, but it's doing a whole lot of ma magic in the, uh, in the background. Another one is PyGeo API. How much time do I have? Oh, all right, brilliant, thank you. So another uh, open source software product is PyGeo API. And PyGeo API, as the name suggests, uh, suggests it's a Python-based um, server implementation of, uh, of OGC API standards. So not just OGC API processes, um, it supports a whole a lot of them, and I'll go through them in a, in a, in a minute. Um, so the whole idea behind it is to offer a RESTful interface through which client applications can, you know, can leverage the capabilities offered by PyG API. So it's not just about the processing capabilities, but all, it's also about the publishing of the data, so vector data, coverage data, but also the metadata uh, uh, as well. Um, so this is a screenshot from the PyGeo API website, and when you go on there, it, 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 uh, they've got a few lines of, uh, of, of commands there uh, explaining how you can deploy it in five minutes. Uh, I've seen it done in three minutes, so you know it's, it's that easy to, to deploy it. It's really, really, really easy. Um, OGC API standards supported by PyGeo API, there are lots. Um, I've identified a few here. OGC API features for publishing vector feature data, OGC API, environmental data retrieval for spatial temporal um, uh, environmental data resources, and then OGC API processes, which is the subject of uh, the, the talk this morning, and OGC API records for catalog data. Now, I wanted to point something uh, out as well. PyGeo API is a, a certified uh, OGC compliant product for OGC API features and OGC API environmental data retrieval. And not only is it certified OGC compliant, but it's also a reference implementation for both OGC API features and OGC API environmental data retrieval. And um, I point that out because it highlights the role that the open standards community and the open, well, let me say the role that the open source community is able to play within the open standards community. So we rely on the open source software community to, um, you know, to help us with getting uh, best practices out, but also getting implementations of these standards out so that they can be implemented and deployed, uh, you know, across the wider industry. So um, PyG API supports quite a number of these standards, including OGC API processes, which is the subject uh, of this talk this morning. Um, some screenshots, landing page, as I mentioned, Earlier on, this is kind of like the uh, the shop window, the entry point. Uh, so on the left hand side, you can see the um, landing page from uh, PyG API. Uh, you can see, for instance, a link to the collections resource. So this lists all the data collections that are available. So feature collections, um, um, well, tiles, uh, collections, coverages, and so on. Um, and then processes. So um, all the processes that you publish through um, uh, through an interface consistent with OGC API processes. In the case of PyG API, it lists them there, but also jobs. So when you start a processing job, um, it becomes uh, it's listed uh, under that uh, particular uh, link there. And then on the right hand side, it's a screenshot of an Open API uh, definition document rendered in HTML. And uh, you can see the paths that are available, the resources, the paths of the resources that are available from this implementation. So the landing page, collections, conformance, declaration, open API um, resource, and then the processes. So um, these are screenshots from PyG API. Um, and if you've used Swagger or the open API specification, uh, then all of this will be familiar uh, to you. So that's um, um, PyG API. To help, developers implement the standard to help them pick up these standards. We've published a number of resources, including some guidance documents about transitioning from the web processing service standard to the OGC API processes uh, standard. This particular uh, guidance document actually uses PyG API. So if you're using PyG API, it's an open source software product. Um, this is a good place to start to figure out how you might be able to 
um, implement a, a facade or a proxy in front of um, uh, another AP, uh, web API that you might already have, um, you know, to figure out how to expose it through a, an, uh, an interface consistent with OGC API processes. So the guidance document talks about, you know, installation, configuration, creation of a process, but also how to invoke the process. Um, so just a couple of more uh, slides. Um, along with the standard, we've published a best practice document uh, on uh, how to uh, build uh, application package um, infrastructure, that, particularly for Earth observation systems. Earlier on, where we talked about open, uh, open EO, uh, and this is uh, the same concept. The open open EO com uh, community contributed to this work. It was supported by the European Space Agency. Um, but basically, this specifies how you use OGC API processes to um, provide an environment where you could, for instance, uh, deploy a Docker. Uh, image across a network and have that Docker image op uh, run processes on a data store that is available within that infrastructure. So this is also worth uh, looking into. And um, a lot of open source projects took part in developing uh, this specification. So it is something that uh, you might find uh, relevant to the work that you are, you are doing. If you'd like to find out more information about OGC API processes, it is available uh, at this URL there. So that's ogcapi.ogc.org slash processes. You'll find links to example open API definition documents. You'll find links to the standards document. Um, you'll find links to several other resources. And there'll be uh, links to other OGC API standards as well. So in summary, OGC API standards are becoming a key requirement for web APIs that are offering geospatial capability. And OGC API processes in particular is gaining traction as the standards-based way of offering executable processes across a network. We've seen implementations of this standard um, across you know, government, uh, private sector, as well as academia. And um, what we are saying to organizations is that um, you've got to look at um, the, these standards and explore how they can uh, specially enable your web APIs. Um, have a um, discussion with the open source community, see how they can um, support you in building your infrastructure. So we're saying that to, you know, to the wider industry. So I think that creates, uh, um, I'll say, um, some... Um, uh, you know, it creates some responsibility for the open source community to ensure that you are up to speed on these standards and, and you are able to respond to the requests and, um, you know, and, and requests for support that come uh, from other parts of industry. And OGC API uh, processes can uh, help you with that, uh, whereas the wider OGC API suite can help you make your data more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And with that, um, thank you for listening. Thank you, Is there anyone got questions at all?